Hello guys, this is Doron's Movies and today I'll be talking about the humans and their origin, covering the creation, history and the most recent state. Of course, focusing mainly on the origin. So without further ado, let's get into the lore. Many millennia ago, when the titans departed Azeroth, they left the keepers in charge of the planet and the titan forged. The forge of wills in particular, aside from helping the world soul, was used to produce new creations that would further serve the keepers. However, this would go terribly wrong later on. When the Pantheon was defeated by Sergeras in battle, the Keepers suddenly became confused and yogg saron from his prison used this opportunity to wreak havoc. The old god corrupted the forge, tainting it with the curse of flesh, a disease that infected any new creation and even spread to the previous generations. The purpose of it was to weaken the stone and metal servants into soft and seemingly weak creatures of flesh. Aside from this, Yogg-Saron also manipulated the Keeper Loken, whom subsequently started a massive civil war within the Titan faction. While the rest of the Keepers were caught off guard, Tyr and Arcadas realized what was going on. They planned to overthrow him, but since they were far less powerful, they decided to first steal the discs of Norganon. These relics contained all recorded history of Azeroth, including the betrayal of Loken, and by studying them, they would be able to see everything he had done firsthand. After they had stolen the discs, they regrouped and planned to seek refuge south in order to plan their next move. Therefore, they gathered a great number of Titan Forge that survived and wanted to join them. A peaceful group of Rykel, which was a rare occurrence in itself, most of the Earthen and the Mecha Gnomes. Together, they traveled south, not knowing that they would change the history of Azeroth forever. When Loken realized that the discs were stolen, he was furious. Out of desperation, he released two extremely powerful old god generals, Zakaz and Kittix. It wasn't long until these monstrosities caught up with the group. Fearing for the lives of his allies, Tyr ordered Arcadas and his friend Aranaya to lead the Titanforge south while he would hold off the Cataraxi for as much as possible. After a very intense battle, Tyr sacrificed himself, defeating the old god servants while losing his life. The Titanforge were impressed and eternally grateful, and in honor of their fallen comrade, Aranaya named the crater where Tyr died. Tyr's Fall, in Vrykal language, Tyr's Fall. The Keeper was buried in the place, and while the rest of the refugees would continue south, ultimately reaching Uldaman, the Vrykal that followed them felt compelled to do something more. They were so moved by this noble sacrifice that they decided to settle at the battle site and spend the rest of their days in this place. As these Vrykal were infected by the Curse of Flesh, they would later on become the first humans ever recorded. Aside from them, another wave of Vrykal would arrive that would further the newly created race. In Northrend, the Vrykal whom previously viewed the Keepers as gods decided to abandon them as they felt that they were left to the mercy of the Curse of Flesh. King Ymiron promised to unite all the Vrykal and to eradicate any sign of the corruption. He ordered all of his followers to cleanse the malformed infants to keep the integrity of the race. Of course, most of the Vrykal obeyed this order, however, some could not bring themselves to murder innocent children, especially their own. So they sought to hide them in a place that they had only heard in legends, the place where Tyr and Arcadas led the Titan Forged. A number of Vrykal fled with their children and left them in the care of the Vrykal that had inhabited Tyrasfall. Together they would evolve or devolve into humans. Over 10,000 years later, humanity flourished in what was now the new continent of the Eastern Kingdoms. They practiced crude forms of druidism and shamanism, and even though surrounded by many threats, their biggest threat was themselves as the tribes constantly warred against each other. 
However, one tribe in particular, the Arati, saw the error of their ways as they realized that they had much bigger enemies, at the time the Amani trolls, and if they remained divided and constantly at war, they would go extinct. So Warlord Thoradin embarked on the campaign to bring the humans under one banner, either by diplomacy or by force. However, he was no tyrant as his goal wasn't to become a dictator and rule all the humans, but instead he wanted to create a strong human nation, the nation of Arator. Soon after, the capital city Strom was created and the kingdom grew more and more powerful. Now they were ready for the trolls, who had also gained significant power in time. Through many battles, together with the help of the Hyos of the North, they managed to finally defeat the Amani trolls. Now, as the reign of King Thoradin had ended, the new generation of humans decided to further expand the nation. They created many outposts and forts. In order to protect the farms from gnolls and other wildlife, a stronghold was created known as Lordron in honor of the general Lord Dane that had fallen in battle. A trading outpost was created known as Altrek Fortress, a harbor known as Gilneas, and they even expanded to the island known as Kultiras. The biggest trading center was the city of Dalaran that would later become the hub for all the magi and the spellcasters. Eventually, Strom, the main city, started to lose power and these cities gained more and more autonomy. Strom could no longer compete with the economies of the cities and many of the noble families had departed. Most of them went north and founded a new city-state of Lordaeron, expanding the previous stronghold region. The last living descendants of Thoradin also left, but instead of going north, they ventured all the way south where they founded the kingdom of Stormwind. For over a thousand years, the order would remain like this with all these city-states, but everything would change with the Orcish Wars and the Scourge invasion. Today, only Stormwind remains as the last human kingdom and the descendants of the ancient Vrykel and King Thoradin. Delran is now neutral between many races, Lordaeron was destroyed, Alterac as well, Gilneas recently, only cool Tiras will be revealed in the new expansion. Regardless, the humans still remain as one of the most ancient and influential races on the planet of Azeroth. Alright and that is all I have for this video, do leave your thoughts on what you think about this and don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps out and keeps all the content going. Thanks a lot for taking time out of the day to watch this video and see you next time.